Many fans already think that Sukuna is dead, JJK is over and the next chapters will be about saving Yuta and peaceful and happy times, but I don't think so. Knowing Gegehi's writing style and how he loves to drop shockers, there is absolutely no way Jujutsu Kaisen will end so simply. In this video, I'm going to explain everything in detail and by the end you might just be thinking like me. But before that, only 3% of people who always watch my videos are also subscribed to the channel. So what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button and become a permanent otaku. So, the chapter starts off with Sukuna soul shaming Megumi, telling him what a loser he is. Sukuna doesn't hold back rubbing it in Megumi's face, how he got his body taken over, how he was forced to kill his own sister and how everyone who tried to help him ended up turning away. It just goes to show that all the sacrifices made to save Megumi might not have been worth it. Sukuna basically tells him to give up saying there is nothing left for him to fight for and that he should just surrender and let Sukuna handle everything. But for once in his cursed life, Megumi catches on to something. He challenges Sukuna asking if he's so desperate because there is only one Sukuna finger left after this. However, Megumi is mistaken here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there should still be at least two fingers left, right? One that was sealed inside Itadori which should still be there and the other one that Nobara hit with her curse technique. Megumi essentially tells Sukuna that since the creation of those fingers is a complicated process, he won't be able to make more in the middle of a fight. And if the ones Sukuna has already created are gone, excluding those two I just mentioned of course, then Sukuna is likely doomed because those remaining fingers won't be enough to anchor his soul and connect it to them. But here is where Megumi is wrong because there is another way and I'm going to talk about that just a little bit later. Megumi feels a strange sense of relief as he sees even Sukuna, who now looks like a blob of ink, is scared of dying. He admits that he never planned on living a normal human life and that's something crucial. There are countless others like him who want to live ordinary lives but just can't. This is an important point actually. In case you have forgotten, every person Sukuna defeated and killed and Megumi Fushiguro points he can use through the calling game. Also, it's possible that Kenjaku gave him his own points as well, together with the authority to complete the merger. Since the calling games is still going, the one with those points has the authority to do many things. These points are not just for healing others or even potentially reviving the dead like Gojo, Higuruma or whoever. They could be used on something far more ambitious like converting every single human being into a sorcerer. Megumi's words there are tons of people in the world like me might be hinting at just that. It's possible he's been cooking up this plan, though it's really Yuki's brainchild not his, but if Megumi actually goes through with it, the entire population of Japan could be transformed into sorcerers. And if that happens, the curses that currently pose a threat to humanity could naturally fade away as there would be fewer defenseless humans and far more capable ones to fend them off. In a paradoxical twist, by turning ordinary humans into sorcerers, Megumi might actually create a world where every single person can live free from the threat of curses. Anyway, let's move on. As the last traces of Sukuna's presence fade away from Megumi's soul, we see Yuji's domain start to crumble, while Sukuna gets ripped out of Megumi's body. Oh, and if you did not catch it, Yuji's domain is enormous, like insanely huge. Most sorcerers keep their domains small to minimize cursed energy loss. Even Mahito Boy kept his at a manageable size. This really shows how inexperienced he is in this area. And about Yuji's domain, what did it even do? My guy just threw it out like it was something unimportant. No sure hit effect, no name which is absolutely wild. All he did was hit Sukuna with that left-right combo. Honestly, I blame Gege for neglecting our boy again. But seriously, the best part of domain expansion is the name, at least to me. Like unlimited void, malevolent shrine and true mutual love even. And without it, the whole thing just feels kind of hollow, you know? Alright, alright, I'll stop now. So, let's move on. 
this scene I'm going to talk about now is the most crucial one in the chapter, and I will explain it in detail. First off, Yuji looking down on Sokuna just like he did with Mahito was absolutely epic, at least for me as someone who's been on Team Itadori since the very beginning. By the way, if you saw my spoiler video, you know why I was not a fan of the conversation between Sokuna and Yuji. Because I believe that kind of compassion and mercy is just unreasonable. You went for someone as kind-hearted as Yuji. And I say this while fully understanding Itatori's character. I get it Yuji embodies Buddhahood and all that compassion and stuff. But there are some lines that once crossed, there is no coming back. And Sukuna did not just cross the line, he obliterated so thoroughly that you can't even see where it was. Yet, despite all that, Yuji Itadori made an offer. He offered Sukuna the same deal he did inside his domain, to return to his body and live out the rest of his days together with Yuji. Itadori promised that he would not abandon Sukuna even if others could not understand or accept him. And even though Sukuna rejected Yuji's offer, I don't really think he had a choice. If he had accepted willingly, great, but even if he rejected it like he did, I don't think he actually had the freedom to choose. I believe Yuji is going to force this upon Sukuna in some way. Perhaps Yuji might ingest the fingers or whatever the mechanism is to imprison the king of curses within him again and live out the rest of his days with Sukuna, giving him a second chance at life through him. Now, whether Sukuna will be changed by this at all, it's hard to say actually, but I don't think Yuji will just let him die here. This moment is the culmination of the entire moral and philosophical arc that Gege has been weaving throughout the manga, and even though I disagree with the philosophy that unconditional mercy is ok, because I believe there are lines you simply can't back from, this is not about my beliefs, it's about the story Gege is telling after all. Now, as for Sukuna's possible transformation through the mercy Yuji shows him, I won't say it's impossible, but I do think it's unlikely. Even at death's door, Sukuna does not really reject Yuji's offer though. He genuinely believes that Yuji is either lying or mocking the King of Curses. He even commends Yuji for taking this far so far. This reaction shows that Sukuna has no concept of compassion and mercy. He simply does not understand how forgiveness and kindness work. Sukuna was a true predator from birth. In fact, he was so ruthless that even before he was born, he consumed his own twin in the womb. He's lived his life as a curse, as a predator, the epitome of selfishness. That's why he does not understand Yuji and that's why he has despised and belittled Itadori throughout the story. But what happened at the end, when Sukuna called Yuji by his actual name instead of brat or something worse, it was proof that he recognized Yuji as a worthy opponent. Despite how despicable Sukuna can be, he always respected strong opponents in his own twisted way. Whether it was Gojo, Maki or even Jogo, whose desire to become human Sukuna found shameful. All in all what I'm trying to say is that Sukuna could potentially learn to at least understand how human feelings work. And that might be the answer to Gojo's riddle. The one who will teach Sukuna about love could be none other than Yuji Tadori. Moving on, after Sukuna's defeat, Uraume, realizing that their master has fallen, loses the will to continue fighting. So they do what they have done best all this time, start spouting nonsense. Uraume tells Hakari that the only reason Sukuna was defeated is because of his reincarnated body, and that they were too lucky to be born a thousand years later. Now, technically this statement does have some merit since Sukuna was not physically killed, instead his soul was ripped out of Megumi's body. But let's be real, the good guys never even tried to outright kill Sukuna. Their goal was always to defeat Sukuna and save Megumi at the same time. So they went for the remove parasite from the vessel strategy. In my opinion this was the dumbest move resulting in many casualties. But hey, who knows, maybe they will even revive those casualties with the points Megumi gathered. Anyway, Uraume disappears without accomplishing anything significant other than preparing the bath for Sukuna. After that, there are some less important pages showing Megumi's reunion with Nobara and Yuji. But there is also somewhat crucial interaction where Megumi's presence is key to saving Yuta. This is probably related to Fushiguro's ability to use those points to somehow save Yuta. 
So I've been thinking about how Utah could potentially become the new villain, because I honestly don't believe JJK will end this easily. I'm sure there is at least one more big twist coming, other than Fushiguro using the Culling Games point system of course. However, I'm struggling to find a way that would turn Yuta into a villain. Like Yuji, Okotsu is also a kind-hearted kid, so it's hard to imagine him risking becoming a villain just to save his own life. The only explanation I can think of involves Kenjaku. Maybe Kenjaku's curse technique is closely tied to him, allowing him to resurrect within Yuta's body. Or maybe nothing will happen and this really is the end. So the next three chapters might just be good guys celebrating their victory while mourning the dead. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this chapter guys. Do you think this is how it ends or do you believe like me that there is one final battle yet to come? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm planning to start covering new manga soon, possibly Hunter x Hunter and Kagurabachi. I haven't decided yet, so if you have any suggestions, feel free to let me know. Until next time, keep reading, keep exploring, and stay otaku.